morning, Bethany family. It's brother Kevin here. And sister Desiree. And as you can see, we are out here in a parking lot this morning. But you know, in the elements, her favorite place to be. Her favorite place, her favorite place. <laughs> but we're in the parking lot, but we wanna hear where you're tuning in from, whether it be your bedroom, your living room, wherever you're tuning in from, we wanna know where you're tuning in from at this moment. And if this is your first time joining us, make sure that you put that VIP in the comments so we can show you a whole lot of love. And all my Bethany people that are consistent with us every Sunday morning, make sure that you show those people that are putting the VIP in the comments, show them a lot of love, right? Because it's, it's a time for us to, you know, bond and, you know, fellowship. Of our 8 o'clock service, you know? No better way to start off the morning, right? You know, say hello <laughs> to, the morning to, us, to the folks in the comments. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, we want to know where people are tuning in from, right? Yeah. So, what better way is this finding out where you're tuning in from by playing a game, right? Of course. <laughs> so, you mentioned that. We want to know where, we, where we're tuning in from. We're mm -hmm. from all over the world. From yeah. Right here in New Jersey from, you know. I don't know where. You tell me. We're gonna play a game. It's called How Far You Go. Ooh. So, and this is just for you guys. So, if you are outside the United States, leave a heart emoji. If you are on the West Coast, uh oh, leave the hands. I love that you're demonstrating. Love it. I got you. If Visual you are aids. In the Jersey State area, leave a smiley face. And if you are in Jersey, in somewhere, a city in New Jersey, mm -hmm. then leave a thumbs up. So we want to see who is the furthest. How far you go? Who's the furthest person watching this morning? Yeah. We're gonna shout that person out at the very end or uh, later on in the service. Absolutely. So please make sure that you tune in the comments to see who the winner is, so you can claim a special prize here from Bethany's social media team. But you know, something that we do here at Bethany is we have the Connection Church. Yes, we do. And it's a beautiful way just to stay connected during this time. Um, it was one of the many things that was blessed during this time, and that's how we're able to engage with people from the west coast like you said maybe someone outside the united states i like to say that it is the church without the physical building without the walls actually. right exactly that's exactly what it is you get a little bit of everything right connection church and you know we have a special interview from someone that is a part of Ch connection church right yes, so we want to go right to the video now take a look at this interview hi my name is Ada Madison, and I am a member of Connection Church. I'm also a member of Church on the Living Edge with Bishop Mark Sharona here in Orlando, where I live. You know, I first heard about Bethany Baptist Church about three years ago when Bishop Evans spoke at our annual Issachar Conference, and I was so blessed by him that I really, I told him I became your internet stalker. I started watching everything on YouTube, and you know, I even found Bishop Evans on Amazon Prime. So I was watching everything you guys put out, and he came back and he visited the next year, and I had an opportunity to meet him and Pastor Nick. And you know, it wasn't long after that, that COVID hit and you know, our whole entire world's changed. And one of the things that radically affected my, my daily living was all this additional time I had when I was at home. And it was about that time that I heard about Connections Church and I decided to hop in. And you know, I've been taking classes through the Embrace series at, through Abundant Harvest three days a week with Pastor Val and Pastor Nick and have been so richly blessed by it. Just amazing classes that they give. In addition to that, there's been other classes that I've taken with Bishop Evans and Pastor Nick and just amazing education and um, spiritual insight. I've just been um, totally blessed by all of it. You know, if you're if you're sitting on the fence and you're wondering, should I or shouldn't I? I'm telling you, hop in because it's not just the leadership and the amazing education, the different ministries you can be involved in, but it's also the other members of Connections. It's just amazing. People just like me and you all over the place. And it's just a, a super cool thing that Bishop and, and Pastor Nick have done in creating Connections Church in this time of all this crazy division in our world. It's really been a great union. Um, I'm just richly blessed by it. Thank you, Bishop Evans. Thank you, Pastor Nick. Thank you, Pastor Val. 
What an amazing interview from yeah. Sister Ada. She's incredible. She's so, She's so dope. We love her. And if you want to be a part of the Connection Church, we want you to make sure that you visit us at go to number two, bethany.com slash connections. Like I said, it's just another way to stay connected with us, especially if you want to be a part of the ministries. The yeah. ministries are still strong in the Connection Church. You have exclusive content. There's classes on there. So please make sure that if you are feeling disconnected from us at this moment, please make sure that you join us at the Connection Church at go to number two, bethany.com slash connections, where we can just fellowship another way, right? And all those who actually are getting connected right now, yeah. make sure that you are sharing, you're liking, and pouring more people in. Absolutely. This morning and our 11 o'clock service that we have coming up later in yes. uh, this morning. But right now, we want to make sure that we're highlighting each and every one of our VIPs. Yeah. Good morning, folks, our newcomers. We're mm -hmm. so, so blessed and happy to have you. Mm -hmm. And again, everybody who is already Bethany family. Yeah. Make sure you guys continue to pour love into them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And make sure that you are checking in the comments to see who won that game earlier. Because yes. <laughs> yes. you want to claim that prize. Wanna see who I want to claim the prize. But something that... <laughs> Something that we have always said is that, you know, our ministries here, they have been an amazing, doing an amazing job during this time of, you know, being locked out of the church physically. So we want to highlight all the ministries and we want to shout them out. You guys have been doing an amazing job by keeping us connected. But, you know, we're, we're a visual, a visual church. church. So we have something, we have something. for you guys. <laughs> Take a look at this video now. When we're singing, we're not just singing to entertain. Apology accepted. Go and send no more. We're singing because we're singing to the audience of one another God. So I've been poured back into so much uh, being a part of the ministry, just uh, being around great leaders. It's helped me have a stronger and closer relationship with God. It's ministry. Be in the presence of God first. amazing video it's such an amazing and you know video what? it wouldn't be engaged live without a game for us you know being foolish so here we go the game today is called one's gotta go one gotta go so up on the screen you're gonna see what has to go and we're mm -hmm. gonna so the first one is strawberries a strawberry candy or peppermint candy. come on strawberry candy the peppermint candy and the melt away why is she explaining why just any other you know, no stuff. just we gotta move we gotta move the next one is tambourine or timbro. Ooh. Now, I know a lot of you might think that they're the same thing, but they're not. Mm -hmm. See, the timbro, you do want to be. Yeah. The tambourine, you got to. So, the tim we're going to do tambourine because you got to hear that bass. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. We're going to touch a degree on that one. Yeah. Y'all pray for Kevin. The next one and the last one is church hats or lap scarves. See, we're going to, we love, they're both fashion pieces, but if you're sitting behind someone with a church hat, we love it. But I think it's getting ready for that time to get into our service. So we are getting ready to dive right in. No, we're not. No, we're not grabbing the strawberry candies. We're not doing that, ma'am. No, we're not. But we are going to make sure that we're liking, we're commenting, we're sharing and inviting someone to join us this morning as Bishop talks about chestnut checkers, right? Get ready for this dynamic word, guys. Ready? We'll see you on Engage Live afterwards as well. Get ready. We praise and thank God for being here with us this morning, and we are thankful for you, all of our Bethany family, and everybody else watching across the world. I want you to be an active part of the service this morning, so like, share, and let's give God glory, praise, and honor for such a time as this. <laughs> thank you, God. I know it hurts. I know it's painful I know the season you've been going through is not fun But you're gonna make it You 
can take it ah. with Jesus on your side you're gone away cause I know this is your time ah. you believe that this morning this is your season hold on that's what we want you to do. Be strong. Be strong. Tell them why. You are really hey. For such a time as this. Hey, God. Ha. Thank you, God. Thank you for waking us up this morning, making us strong and making us better, Lord God. This song we dedicate to you, Jesus. Help me, singers. I know it's painful. I know it's painful. Who are we talking to this morning? I know the season. The season you've been going through is not fun. But guess what, family? Uh, I believe it in my spirit. You can say it. With Jesus on your side. Jesus on Woo! your side. That's good news this morning. Watch this. This is your message right here. Hold on. Hold on. Do what? Be strong. Come on. Hold on. Be strong. Hey. Hold on. Be strong. Hold on. for making us more than conquerors. We thank you for making us more than conquerors. Everything that we've been through, Lord God, has been working together for our good. And now we stand here on a strong foundation, knowing that all things are going to get better. All things are looking good right now. Good news for such a time. Such a time. Stay 
right there and say, This is your time. This is your season. And you were created for it. Such a time as the end. Such a time. Praise the Lord. He is the great I am. He is the Lord of Lords. He is God all by himself. And we're so glad about that. We're going to get into our scripture reading for today. It's in 1 Peter chapter 5, starting at verse number 7. He says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because at the adversary... The devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resisteth steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We're getting ready to pray for you. Get ready to trust and believe that God is going to move in your life. It's been a very stressful season, a very prolonged one, where we feel the weariness of the day. We wish it would be over. We wish things would go back to normal, but it seems like those things aren't going to happen anytime soon. And people are dealing with the struggles of the environment. All that's going on, some of us are just tired. But we're getting ready to pray for you. That while the devil is like a roaring lion, you need to know you serve the lion. The roaring lion, he's like a roaring lion. He talks a whole lot of trash. But you serve the real lion. Jesus is the one that really reigns supreme. This morning, I want you to learn that when the devil roars, you roar back. He talks trash, you talk trash back. He's like the lion, but he's not the lion. Say the words of Jesus Christ and roar back. Peter encourages us to cast all our cares upon him, to trust him and believe him, that this morning, God will establish you and he will strengthen you. That's the God that we serve. Getting ready to pray for you. Father, we thank you again for this moment. We honor you for this day. We thank you for your presence. We appreciate you for your loving kindness. Thank you for being God, the great I am, for being Lord of all. We appreciate you this morning because you've been good to us, and we thank you for your kindness. We appreciate you because you strengthen us, Lord, when we're weak. You said to cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. Lord, some of us are frustrated, we're tired, we're weary, but Lord, we thank you that you can handle our weariness. You promised us in your word that we would see your goodness. You told us in your word that you can strengthen us, that when we're weak, you are made strong. Reveal your strength in us this morning. Actualize your strength in us. We give you our weakness, please give us your strength. We thank you, Lord, that our weakness is not counter to your strength, and Lord, you have the power to overcome all. And for that, we give you praise. We glorify you. We magnify you for this service. And we pray, Lord, that you would strengthen everybody that's watching. That, Lord, you would lift up the bowed down head. That, Lord, the brokenhearted, you would begin to heal in men. Those who are weary, that you would give them strength. You said if we wait on you, you renew our strength. Renew our strength this morning. Encourage our hearts so we can run a little bit further. We thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive your strength. Receive the power of God working in your life. God bless you. You know, things have been really going well right now with me and Tiffany. Oh, that is great. Hey, you know, she is a little different. Yeah, but, but in a good way. You know, she's been showing me some things about myself, things okay. that I didn't know I could do. Yeah, I'm really glad the way things are going with me and Tiffany. Oh, well, all right. But listen here, you just remember that I am her big sister, so do not play with her heart. Nah, it's not like that. This is All real love. Right. Real love? What 
Oh, no. What do you know about real love? Better yet, the question is, how long have y'all been dating? Well, you know what? I've never even dated anyone mm. this long without... Uh, without... Um, uh, about six months. Uh, six months ago. We long. have not gotten busy. Ooh, hey, family! What's going on, mm, y'all? Mm. What you doing sitting here? Uh-huh. Wait. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> what y'all talking about? Nothing, Shelly. Mind your business. Fine. Mm-hmm. Anyway. All right, so where's Tip at? She's not here. Do you see her? She ain't here. She's not here. So if she not here, why is he here? I mean, wasn't yes. this whole announcement thing supposed to be about the two of y'all? Oh, I can't okay. wait her to um, I can't. Hey, mama! Hey, mama! What you Inside doing in voice. there? You cooking something good in that kitchen? Hey, Shell. No, I'm in here cleaning mm. these dishes. I'll be in there in a minute. Not today, oh, Jesus. Man, Not I today. something to snack on. <sighs> All right, then. Well, where is Tiff? Because, look. A sister got things to do. I can't be sitting here waiting for her all day long. She texted me. She said she's on her way. She's on her way. Yes. Ugh. So what she want to talk to us about anyway? I don't know, Shelly. She just called me and said that she wanted us to be here because she had something real important to tell us. Just mm. relax. Mm hmm So, ugh. you mean to tell me, sir, that you don't what? know what she want to talk to us about? <laughs> Jesus. No, I kid. do not know. Oh my goodness. What kind of relationship you call yourself having with my sister you and you don't up. even know what is Shelly? Get mama tell, get her. Get her harassing this man like that. Now mm -hmm. your sister mm -hmm. gonna be here in a minute and she'll let us know what she want to tell us. All right, mama. Hey, mm -hmm. everybody. Hey, Hi, Hi. How you doing? Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, uh, can we cut the greeting short? I mean, we all know each other already. Hello. Um, so can you tell us why you called us all here? <sighs> okay, Gosh. calm down. All right, so y'all know that lately I've been doing a lot of soul searching and mm -hmm. just trying to figure out what I should be doing with my life, right? right? Okay. right. What, uh, mm -hmm. what you should be doing with your life? Yeah. Yes. What? What? I can't okay, on. hold on, hold on. So you mean to tell me you have a house, mm -hmm. you have a car, okay. you have Mama, a job. A you have a um, boyfriend, and you don't know what to do with all that? People, would they fake you? I'm going to snatch them up. Shoot! She is not just talking about material things. Keep your mouth shut. Thank you. Go ahead, I've sis. been trying to ask God to help me find my way. Mm-hmm. You know what, Tiffany? I am right here with you. I'm very proud of you. Oh Thank you. my goodness. Can you please get to the point? <laughs> Whatever. Okay. So last oh night, I, was, I had a dream. All okay. right. And in my dream, I was lying in this bed in a maternity ward. Maternity? Woo! There it is. Oh my gosh. Oh my go? gosh. You have gone and got yourself see, pregnant. See, all extra. Oh, see, oh, mama. Oh, see, mama, see. you trying to say I'm the wild one and everything, but you look us here, right here. Y'all fresh. And you ain't even going together that long. Look, ooh, I'm no. telling you. Mm. No, I she can't. said she had a dream. A dream. A dream, a dream, right, That's Tiff? That's what she said. Right. The dream represents my life. Mm. I'm pregnant. Tiff! Uh -oh. What? She oh, said how could you do this to me? Lord how could you do this to us? I can't believe this. No, no, no. 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 No, the dream the Lord told me that I am pregnant, but I'm pregnant with purpose. With purpose? Oh, oh, thank you, Tim. Yes. Okay. What kind of name oh, is purpose? Mama, okay, I'm, so I'm wait, Jesus. what you gonna do? You Take gonna spell it P-U-E-R-P-O-S-E? Oh, no, 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 wait. P-E-R-R-P-O-S-E? Because you know you can't spell it the regular way because it's a name. Shelly, you're not listening to me. Just pump the brakes on your mind and your mouth for one second. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes, please do so. Oh, my. 
Sis, listen, I heard you. You said that in the dream, God has given you purpose and he is about to birth it. Thank That's you. Right. Girl. My life, just like a pregnant lady, feels labor pains. All the things that I've been going through are like labor pains. And okay. the Lord is saying it's time for you to give birth okay. to this purpose. Oh, yes. gotcha. Whew. You really had me scared there, Tiffany. Yeah, I am so, oh. You know what? I am so glad. I'm just so happy what God's doing for you, what Amen. he's doing for us. You know what? I'm right here with you. I'm not going nowhere. Oh, Thank Lord, you. have mercy. <laughs> Tiffany, just continue to be intentional yes. about serving the Lord, and everything is going to be just fine. Just Thanks, fine. Just fine. <laughs> well, girl, ain't nobody else saying it, but I'm going to say it. I'm glad you ain't pregnant with no baby. Okay, because mama, I'm gonna tell you right now, I ain't no babysitting material. You okay? sure? Yeah, because you ain't gonna be having me babysitting that baby. Mm. But no, seriously, Tiff. Now, now that you kind of find your purpose and everything, you think maybe you can help me with mine? Girl, only God can do that. <laughs> <laughs> you heard about that? Wait, wait, wait. I can help you find him though. Okay. Come on. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Sis, you know, I thought you was really pregnant, and no. I was like, oh my gosh! No. <laughs>
Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome once again to the Encounter Worship Experience. I'm Bishop David G. Evans. I'm so glad you've taken the time to join me once again. We're in a powerful conversation uh, in our Chess Not Checkers series of messages, uh, foundation of those messages based on spiritual warfare, uh, removing all the superstitions, teaching you exactly what the Bible says concerning spiritual warfare. And in the context of that warfare, we have um, moved or progressed from uh, the curse of the law to grace to understanding your position in Christ, uh, definitively defining the place that you are in Christ as it relates to the enemy, uh, how the enemy has no more authority over your life. And then we switch to witches and demons and curses. And now we're in a subset of the series called A Conversation with angels, a conversation with angels. Before we get into the word today, I wanna to thank you once again for joining us. I'm gonna ask you to share with as many people as possible that they might join the conversation and receive the same high impact revelation that you're going to receive today. Uh, there are a lot of things believed about the invisible realm of the kingdom that we're hoping to remove all that um, inconsistency, uh, lack of knowledge, just that uncertainty that you may have regarding things that we've heard about, but perhaps have never been taught about on this level uh, in this fashion. So I want you to share with someone, tweet them, text them, inbox them, call them on the phone, tag a few people and invite them to join the conversation today as we continue in our series, Chestnut Checkers, and this subset called A Conversation with Angels. Before we start, I wanna uh, suggest to you if there are several decisions in our lives that are key to the success of our lives, uh, relationships, vocation, business, but the most important decision are the spiritual decisions that we make. And the top decision is whether you're going to come into a relationship with God in a very sincere way. I'm not talking about just knowing about him or having heard about him or hear people refer to him, but you know him personally, that you come to know the Lord Jesus in the pardon of your sins. The relationship with God is quite introspective, it causes us, if we're honest, to look inside ourselves, to finally let go of the denial about ourselves and suddenly begin to hear the sounds of our own hearts and understand the thoughts of our own minds, where those thoughts and those emotions originated, why we react the way that we do right now in this life. The Bible talks about there having to be a renewal of the mind so there can be a transformation of life. The Bible talks about not just living, but having life more abundantly. I'm suggesting to you today that the most important decision you will ever make in your life and the one that will change the direction the ones that will change the trajectory, the one that will change the velocity, the speed of your life, because you will discover purpose, is the day you make the decision to come into a saving relationship, a saving relationship with God through Jesus Christ. When God comes into your life, when you allow him to be your father, Jesus becomes your savior. And the power to live a life that you never thought possible becomes yours. And that is through the power of the Lord's spirit, that energio, that energy that comes with the relationship. It causes you to live a life that you've never lived before. The Bible calls it quickening, giving you life. So I wanna pray for you today. And I'm gonna pray that you make a decision to connect with God today that you not allow this hour to go by without making that decision. Now I'm going to pray right now and you can make the decision right now. And it's preferred that you do because we're going to get into some pretty deep stuff in the next few moments. But I'm also going to pray that the Holy Spirit move on your heart and your mind at some point during the, the, the lesson, during the conversation that you might make that decision, that life changing, life altering decision. Come on, let's pray. God, I bless your name now for the time and for the opportunity. I ask you, Lord, that you would uh, 
Move by your spirit now. Allow us to push away the Nile and admit we need your help. Allow us to understand that the unhappiness that we continually feel, the discontent that we feel, the anger that we feel, not of you, Lord. Help us, Lord, today to deal with our own emotions and our own minds. And help us to understand clearly that we cannot make a change, a radical change, without the assistance of the Father in heaven. Now, God, I pray for those who have never given their lives to you, that they will respond to the loving spirit of the Lord, that they will respond to your love, God, and draw near to you. I pray for those who know you but have gotten off track, especially during this COVID season, a time when we should have been getting closer, not further away. I pray right now that you reconnect those that know you and love you, committed to you at one time, but find themselves distracted. I'm praying for all of those of you right now in the name of Jesus, praying for those of you that know the Lord but have been seeking a place to connect because there's purpose in a place in the word of God. Purpose in a place, the Garden of Eden, Jericho, Israel, Judah, church, heaven. Purpose in a place, part of the purpose journey, a part of your purpose journey has to do with the significant places that God places in your life as permanent pieces of your life. So I'm praying right now that those of you that are not saved would say yes today and give your life to the Lord. Those of you that need to come back to God, you would say yes today and come back to him. And those of you that need to connect, and that's all of you, need to connect with a house where you're going to be fed, loved, and led. Why don't you say yes today? And I thank the Lord for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made the decision, to give your life to the Lord, write us in the comment section. If you made a decision to come back to the Lord, write us in the comment section. If you made a decision to connect with God's house, write it in the section. Now, you may be someone that's geographically far away from us and wondering, this is what I want, this is what I need, but I'm so far away. Become a part of our virtual church called the Connections Church. Church was started about a year and a half ago. And God has blessed it to grow with people from all around the world. And you can become a part of that very vital, very engaged, very involved part of our ministry. We look forward to having you be a part of who we are, becoming our brothers and our sisters, joining hands together and taking the journey into purpose, destiny, and peace. And I thank God for you right now. Amen. Come on, let's go to the Bible. Go to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6, and I want to start reading at about verse 11. And we'll start our conversation today. Judges chapter 6, verse 11 says, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under the, an oak which was in Ophrah that pertained to Joash, the Abazarite and his son Gideon thresh wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? In other words, if God is with us, why are we going through so much trouble? And where be all the miracles which our fathers told us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? How can I do this? Behold, watch the conversation now. My family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And surely, and the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with you, and you shall smite the Midianites as one man. And he said unto him, if now I have found grace in your sight, show me a sign that you're talking with me. 
Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my present and set it before you. And he said, I will tarry until you come again. And Gideon went in and made ready a kid, unleavened cakes, and of an ephah of flour, the flesh he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and brought it out unto him under the oak, and presented it. And the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and unleavened cakes, lay them upon this rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand, touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes, and there rose up fire out of the rock, and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. And Gideon, when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, and when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face. Now, the last time we were together, we talked about the fact that the Bible is marvelous in the way that it describes the existence, the assignment, the authority, the activity, the purpose of the invisible realm we call the kingdom of God. That the Bible itself is a descriptive illustration of the invisible realm called the kingdom. It is an inventory of invisible things. Now with that in mind, let's review a few things regarding our subject, angels. Angels are therefore revealed and described in the word of God as a reality. And I've been saying it lately, if you believe in the demonic, then you have to believe in angels. Because all a demon is, is a fallen angel. So if you believe in the demonic, then it is almost illegal for you not to believe in the angelic. We also understood from our previous conversations that the realm of angels is an invisible realm until God decides to manifest his presence through them. That helps us remember that we talked about how an angel is God deciding how to show up in the situation he, and in the way he deems appropriate. Now, in order to understand and, and receive the reality of angels, we must have a faith revelation of their reality. We must believe the word of God, not just in their reality, but the work of, the, of angels and the presence of angels. We, we, we will learn last time that angels are an extension of God's glory in the earth, that an angel is God expressing his glory in the earth. Bible illustrates they have presence, they have a practice, and the angels have power. They have presence, they have practice, they have power. They minister for you, prepare your way. They fight many battles in the invisible. Longtime friend of mine, Carol Antrim, said, if you could have seen the unseen dangers, you'd be praising the Lord right now. Angels have taken care of dangers seen and unseen. We learned that Jesus is superior to angels. We learned that the highest manifestation, highest revelation of God is Christ, not the angelic. We also know not only is Jesus superior to angels, but they come in human form. And when they come in human form, they're acting as a mediator for God's presence. Angels come with the word of God, with authority, with power. You remember they were sent. That means they come in the apostolic authority of God. Now watch how this works in the kingdom. The authority that you are under is the authority that you have been deputized with. So they come apostolically sent from God with authority from God to speak for God, to have power over evil like God has, but also to prepare your way, to preserve you in the way, and to prosper you as you go about your business every day. So now we watch this thing in Judges chapter six, 
And this angel is coming to have a destiny conversation with Gideon. And it's a message concerning his future, but it's a word coming straight from God for Gideon. Now, what makes amazing sense to me, the angel of the Lord appears to him when Gideon is doubting who he is. The angel comes down and says in verse 12, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Now, why is this such a, a powerful statement? Because at this point, Gideon is hiding from his enemies. At this point, he's shrunk down. He's not behaving like a mighty man of valor. But the angel comes to declare over him the way God sees him and to remind him of who he really is, what his kingdom identity is. And he says to him, you are a mighty man of valor. But watch what happens with us. Verse 13, watch what circumstances can do to our perception of our own identity. I know you've been through uh, situations in life where something has occurred and you've You've double, double, uh, how did it was? You second guessed yourself as it relates to your ability, as it relates to your talent, as it relates to your, your ability to earn, your ability to sustain. I know there's been times when you have questioned yourself. Those of us that are honest with ourselves, we've questioned ourselves about, you know, why, how did I get in this situation? Watch what happens in 13. Gideon says, watch what causes this dilemma in his perception of himself. And, oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, okay? So a situation is giving him the impression that God is not with him. And he says it like this, if the Lord is with us, why has all this befallen us? Why am I going through all of this if God is with me? That's a reasonable question for any thinking child of God. For any human being, you've prepared, you've fought, you've striven, you've, you've conquered, and still some things don't turn out like we want them to. Circumstances sometimes appear to flip on us in the midst of what we thought was progression. Something comes out of nowhere, unexpected, and all of a sudden you start to wonder about yourself. Am I really qualified for this position? Did, did I really, did I, did I start this business at the right time? Watch what adversity will do to change your perception of yourself. Watch what uh, rejection will do to change your, perce your perception of yourself. Let's talk about that for a minute. One of the greatest strengths you can develop, especially those of you, uh, people I know and people that I don't know who are rejection sensitive, is this. You will continue to be rejection sensitive if you don't come to grips with the behavior that may cause others to reject you. Many times we are guilty, if you will, of the perception, of building the perception that people have of us based on our behavior. So sometimes we can feel as though we've been uh, misinterpreted when in actuality, you may think differently concerning yourself but the behavior you've been displaying leaves those around you no choice but to process you the way you're presenting yourself. You know a tree by the fruit that it bears, not that it intends. So what we display to people reveals what's going on in us. And a lot of times we're living contradictions. We want to be considered differently than that which we are displaying. So all of a sudden now, here's this young man, Gideon, and he's talking about, you know, Lord, I don't feel like you're with us based upon what we're going through at the time. And then he starts questioning the history, the testimony of those that believe God before him. He says, where are all the miracles that our forefathers, that the older believers talk about? And then he says, didn't the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? Verse 13. But now, watch how he's comparing. Watch this. You cannot compare the era you're in to the era of someone you're comparing yourself to. You cannot compare the time 
that they existed to the time that you exist in. Why? Because there are a lot of contextual differences that dictated and mandated responses. It's like, I, you know, if I hear one more time, who is the greatest basketball player of all time? You cannot compare different rules, different training methods, different performance enhancing substances, different rules. I mean, the structure of, of the game is different. So you can talk about people that were the greatest in an era, but when you start to look at the different circumstantial um, vicissitudes that people had to deal with in different eras, it is almost impossible to say this one player was greater than this other because the context of their lives were different. So he starts to compare himself to Israel coming out of Egypt. Well, yes, God did deliver them out of Egypt. God had a redemptive plan for them. God was delivering a whole nation. God was dealing with a 400 year bondage situation. Context. This is not nearly as serious as that, but when the problem is personal, it feels just as intense to you as it does to someone who's gone through something else in their own life context. I hope I'm making sense to you. So sometimes the intensity of my present feelings will cause me to compare to a situation that has happened historically to someone else. And I'll find myself, as my grandmother would say, comparing apples and oranges. The only consistency is that God was in both of those situations. Now watch this. He says, the Lord has forsaken us, and watch this, and delivered us into the hands of our enemies, the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon 14 and said, go in this thy might, thou shalt save Israel. Now watch this. So God is having a purpose and a destiny conversation with Gideon through a messenger in this context who's called the angel of the Lord. So angels have destiny conversations with believers. Now, how is it possible that the angel seems to, he's not ignoring what Gideon is saying. The angel is continually reminding Gideon what God has already said and committed to concerning him. So the message is, yes, I know you're going through all this, but this is what's gonna happen. Go in, your, go in your might, you shall save or deliver Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Watch this, have I not sent thee? God speaking through the angel, have I not sent thee? I've put you here and I have not put you here to fail. I've placed you in that court position that I haven't placed you there to fail. I've locked you into that marketplace and I haven't locked you in there to fail. You shall not fail because God has already decided your destiny. 15, and he said unto him, O Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? In other words, watch what, watch what he, the Lord keeps telling him, this is what you're going to do. And Gideon is having a Moses moment. He keeps telling God what he can't do. Who shall believe me? Who shall I say sent me? What shall I say? You know, there are times in our lives when destiny conversations occur. I need you to hear me very clearly now. When destiny conversations occur, that what God sees us or how he sees us and what he sees us doing seems too great for the perception we have of ourselves. And we'll start, to, watch this, God says, I'm going to bless you. And you start saying, here are the reasons why I don't think you can. God is saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you this project, and you start saying, I don't know what I'm doing. God lays the thing out in front of you, and you say, I don't think I can follow these directions. We tend to reveal our perception of ourselves, even in the face of God's word. Watch what happens here. He says in 15, oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save or deliver Israel? How can I do it? Behold, watch this now, background. My family is poor in Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house. I'm the youngest kid and the, the family I belong to is one of the smallest. We don't even have an army that can do it. 
And the Lord said unto him, surely, watch how the Lord keeps coming back. Surely, I wouldn't have said you'll win if I wasn't going to be with you. Surely, I will be with you, and you shall smite the Midianites as one man. Watch what happens in 17 now. He said unto him, if now, watch this, I have found grace in your sight, then I need you to show me some sign. What you said to me is not enough. I need you to show me a sign that it's you talking to me. I love the patience of God. So what happens? Gideon says, I need you to wait right here. Seems like a time of fellowship. Let me go get some food. Bring it back. We can sit around and talk because I'm hungry. You must be. Brings the food back. Angel says, I need you to put it on a rock. That rock right there. Put it on that rock. Put it on a rock. Lay that which you're going to sacrifice on the foundation of the rock. Lay the unleavened bread there. And the angel takes a step. <coughs> does something spectacular, engulfs it in flames, the whole offering goes up to the Lord. I need you to see that. He lays it on the rock, on the altar, if you will. Angel sets it afire, the whole offering goes up to God. He presents it to who he thinks is a man, but he's presenting it to a messenger from the Lord. And as soon as that sacrifice has gone up, he gets a full revelation. Wow, I've been talking to an angel all along. 22, and when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, angels mediate the presence of God. And always come with a message addressing your present but connecting you with your future. All right, we've got a few more minutes. Go to Judges 13. Let me show you something. If you're getting this, write me on the site. It's a very familiar story. We're going to take an look, incremental look at it. I want you to see something that perhaps you've never seen in this story before. It's about Samson. Um, people give Samson a really bad rap because he um, reacts immaturely to the stress of his purpose. Now, I don't want to get bogged down there because that's a revelation for you. He has purpose. He has an anointing. He has strength given by God. But his reaction his immaturity reveals itself during the stress of his purpose, the stress of his assignment. Watch what happens here. Judges 13, verse 1, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines 40 years. Hmm. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. Three, here it comes. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, appeared unto the woman, said unto her, behold now, thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now watch this. The revelation that I need you to see between verse 1 and verse 4 is, <laughs> is going to be amazing between one and four is that Samson's birth is not coincidental, just like yours, no matter the preparation of your parents, was not coincidental. Samson is born not just out of a situation that seems impossible, so this has to be God's power. But Samson is born for the time that he exists. He's born for the time he exists. Watch this. So that the days that he lived will be marked by his existence. I need you to understand that part of purpose is understanding not just you've been born, but why you were born in the time you were born. Because many of us miss our life purpose because we never get a full understanding, not just that we have a birthday, but why we have one. Why does God continue to allow us to live? Uh, for many reasons, it's because we have not yet discovered our purpose and started to work out his will in our lives. Watch this. And how our life is supposed to impact others in the earth. This is amazing for you to understand. 
You are not an accident. You are not just, you just didn't come along. You were born to do more than you're doing right now. Listen to me. When I say that, not, you know, not more than, you were born to add to what you're doing right now. That's a better way of saying it. Not, you know, I've been taking care of these kids for 30 years, it's time for me to do something. No, I'm not talking about that foolishness. What I'm talking about is this, is that there's a significant time, watch this, where you have been created to make an impact on the people's lives who you've been assigned to love and who have been assigned to love you. There's the heart of the matter. That you have been born to make an impact on those people's lives. And part of a, a missed purpose is when we live our lives never understanding that, not bearing the full accountability and responsibility. And sometimes we know that, and like Samson, later on will not respond in a mature fashion to the stress of his purpose and his assignment. Watch what happens here now. So we get down to verse three, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren. Watch this. So now the angel brings a revelation of her future because he's having a destiny conversation with this woman who appears as though that in this particular way she has no future. Watch what happens. Chapter verse 4. Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, Eat not any unclean thing. Watch the next one. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite. Nazarites didn't cut their hair. Unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. Born for a purpose. Born for such a time as this. And watch this. Not only is she about to receive her destiny and her future and a miracle from the Lord. But there are instructions she must follow in order to, if you will, manage or be a good steward of what she is about to produce. Many times the children of God get a word from the Lord, either through preaching, teaching, or angelic message. And a lot of times we think the instruction is just that, only an instruction. The fulfillment of the prophetic apostolic utterance of the angel cannot happen without your participation. So it is not enough to, uh, you know, um, I don't know how many toys you've had to put together for children in your family. It is a woeful thing many times to try to do it without following the directions. You'll have all the pieces and never get the fulfillment because you will not follow the directions. One of the greatest problems in human beings today is that we seem to rebel at the most unproductive times. Things that will directly affect you, affect others in life. We take that time to rebel. So you go out, you stand in line for two hours to get this toy for this kid, you gotta come home, put it together, and you get there and just decide, I'm going to do it another way. Well, the manufacturer has not only created the parts, but created the parts so they'll work together to build the whole. And you decide, I'm not following directions, I'm going to do it my way. What is my point? To receive a word from the Lord, hear the instruction, ignore the instruction, is counterproductive for your life. It's like making a budget for your finances and never following it and then being despondent with the fact that you're making no financial progress. Come on, let's keep going. So, we first have a revelation in verses one through three, then we have instructions in verses four and five. Watch what happens. Verse six, then the woman came and told her husband saying, a man of God came unto me and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible, very awesome, but I asked him not whence he was, where he came from, neither told me his name. He didn't tell me his name, didn't tell me where he came from. I didn't ask any questions. I needed to hear from him I didn't need to know a whole lot of unnecessary information. I won't stop there. Seven, but he said unto me, behold, thou shalt conceive 
and bear a son, and now drink no wine, nor strong drink, neither and eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God, vowed to God, dedicated to God from the womb, from the womb to the day of his death. His entire, watch this now, his entire life, he shall be dedicated to God. Now this brings in a little, a little questioning here. His entire life. Now we know from reading Samson's life in the word of God that his life was not always God honoring. But God placed his vow on him. Which means along the way, Samson would go from being a babe in his assignment and purpose, a baby in his assignment and purpose, to being a full-grown, fully committed adult at some point in his life. Because God says he's going to be a Nazarite unto me until his death. So we got a revelation from the angel. We got we, a revelation uh, from the angel from God, instructions from God by way of the angel, and then the, the woman testifies, very important piece. She testifies, not to just anybody walking down the street, she goes home and tells Manoah, because he has to be involved in the miracle. He has to be involved in the fulfillment of what God has sent them in a message. Watch what happens now. Let's go down to verse 8. Then Manoah entreated the Lord, said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. Huh. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. Now, this, most people wouldn't see this, but we're going to take a look at this. So he asked for the angel to come again. Angel comes again, but sees, but comes to Manoah's wife. Manoah was not with her. Now, when that happens, you have, you have, you have a double witness for Manoah's wife. She's seen this angel two times. The woman made, made haste, verse 10, ran and showed her husband, said unto him, Behold, she told him all about it. The man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said to him, Art thou the man that speakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. Now watch the difference here. Why did not the angel appear the way Manoah wanted him to? Because the, the, the direct revelation, stay, watch this now, was to Manoah's wife. He who would have to support the revelation got it through testimony. But also this time, watch what happens, through participation. Watch this. Manoah rose and went after his wife and came. Art thou the man that spoke unto the woman? He said, I am. Manoah said, now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? And how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. In other words, everything she told you, watch this, which means the angel was out of her immediate visibility, but present. Everything he told, she told you, do it. Don't get in her way. Let her beware. Don't persuade her to do something she's been instructed not to do because you're going to mess up the process of this miracle. So his job was not to receive the revelation directly. His job was to support it, A, by not persuading her to do something that would break the vow she was going to make to God. This is amazing to me. Watch how it works. Oh, I only got a minute left. Looks like we're going to have to cut it off pretty soon. This, so, we, so we've got revelation for your notes, instructions for your notes, testimony for your notes, watch this, and confirmation of the answered prayer. Confirmation of the answered prayer has come through the voice of God through the angel. All right, one more thing, verse 12. And Manoah said, now let it, thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? How shall we do unto him? And the angel said, of all that I said unto the woman, 
This is what she, got to, she has to do. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine. If she tries to break it, you stop it, because you understand the greater significance of what the instructions are going to produce, or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I command her, let her observe. Don't get in the way. Don't decide, oh, one little drink won't hurt. Don't, don't, don't let, don't you get in her way. And if you see her straying, encourage her to stay in alignment with the will of God. So watch this. So Manoah's wife gets the instruction. There is a revelation. There are instructions. There is a testimony. Confirmation of the answered prayer. Then you, Manoah gets instructions as to how to support his wife in this situation, how to support this consecration, there's the word. So the angel comes down, tell them they've been chosen, conversation with angels, tell them they're being empowered, tell them their participation in the process. I cannot say that enough to you. It is not enough to receive the instruction. The instructions are so you can participate in the miracle that God has promised himself will come to pass in your life. Conversation with angels. Let's go down to 15. And Manoah said unto the angel, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we have made ready a kid for you. He wants to fellowship. He wants to dine. Angel of the Lord said to Manoah, though thou detain me, I will not eat your bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. Now, this is very important. I'm not going to eat. And if you're going to give an offering, it can't be to me. It has to be to the Lord. It's right there in the text. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. The woman had a revelation. Manoah had not yet had the full revelation of angelic presence. And Manoah said unto the verse 17, we got to stop. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, what is thy name? And then, and that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, why are you asking my name? Seeing it is secret. Secret from him on earth. So Manoah puts the food together, brings it to who he thinks is a man. The miraculous is performed. And Manoah gets a revelation which builds his faith in the instruction which causes him to have a testimony, which now confirms his prayer earlier in the chapter. Now he has his own instructions how he is to participate in this move of God. And someone who was unaware of angelic presence becomes suddenly aware that angels are for real. Because angels not only work with believers, but angels work for the believer. Wish I had a few more minutes. Angels work with faith. All right, one more thing. Go to Genesis 22, and we'll stop there for sure. Genesis 22, angels work with faith. Genesis 22. Start at verse 9. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar. Now listen, remember what I taught you. Any time you see, Abraham is the father of the faith. Any time you see Abraham, you replace his name or think of faith. So, faith built an altar there. Faith laid the wood in order. Faith bound his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham, or faith, stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, God speaking to faith through the angel. And he says, here I am, with great relief I can imagine. Lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. And Abraham of faith lifted up his eyes and looked, 
and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket prepared for this moment. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead or in place of his son. And Abraham, or faith, called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. What was seen? The covenant promise that included Abraham and Isaac. God tells them to take the, 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 the transmitter of the covenant and offer it to God. The ram, not a lamb, a ram, someone else, something else born for the moment, fully grown ram, already in place. Faith does not see it immediately. Faith only gains the revelation of the ram ah, after faith is ready to obey. So here comes the substitute, the ram in the thicket. Hmm. So what happens? We find ourselves looking at this because there have to be moments when a faith moment is interpreted for us. The angelic message, the word of God will interpret a faith moment for us. What was the point? Abraham, I needed to be sure that I could trust you with the weight of the position and the purpose that I've given you and created you to occupy. I had to be sure. Now I know that you fear God. Conversation with angels. They guide a servant. They release the word of God. They have authority to act on our behalf and they work for us. All right, I gotta stop. Now, what I want you to do is as you become more aware of the reality of the angels in the word of God, and understand that they are the occupants of an invisible kingdom and they manifest themselves in ways, primarily through messages from God, but sometime in bodily form. As you understand this and begin to have a greater understanding of the spiritual nature of things in the word of God, I need you to have that revelation that all things that manifest on earth are first created in heaven. What we are about to do, giving didn't start with men and women, giving started with God. In the fullness of time, God gave his son. He sent his son. Apostolic mission sent his son that we might be born again. So God is an incredible giver. The reality is, is that God has given us the responsibility of starting a kingdom flow in the earth. Praise, worship, prayer, service, and giving. It is up to you this morning to create that flow. The Bible says when you bring God what he has commanded us to bring, that tenth, not the net, but the gross, that tenth, he says, I'll start a flow. Open up the windows of heaven. Pour you out a blessing. What always blew my mind about that text is that there's a release that's waiting to happen in your life. And because we now control atmosphere, because God has given us dominion in the earth, we control whether the windows open or not. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I submit to you today that it's time for you to release what has been waiting for your faithful obedience. Return the tithe to God. Return that offering. And for many of you today, in addition to that, there's a seed God has been laying on your heart. And it's significant. And it's a little intimidating. But it's not because you don't have the resources. It's because you've never done it before. And God is saying, I need to know how much you love me. Will you give me that Isaac today? Will you place that Isaac on the altar? Go to the icon, sow your seed. Get ready to watch God work. Now we're going to pick this up next time. This conversation with angels, write me. Let me know how this is blessing you. And I remember this now, faith acts like a thing is so. Even when it's not so, that it might be so. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.
Good morning, Good Bethany morning. family. It's Brother Kevin here. And it is Sister Shania. And we just want to take this moment out of service just to give you a quick announcement, right? So, yeah. Sister Shania, what is happening starting on Monday? All right, starting fresh on Monday, we have our Maximize Monday yes. starting at 12 noon. New time, new, new time. time. <laughs> new time. Grab your lunch, 12 noon. Yes. And then we have our recap at 5.30. Yes. And, you know, we get a chance to, you know, highlight this service right now. Yes. So, please make sure that you come with your questions and your comments, right? Yep. And then going into Tuesday at 7 p.m., you know, is our ministry day. Mm -hmm. So we have the link couples ministry at 7 p.m. Yes. So please make sure that you join us. And then we trot on over to Wednesday. And we have our word impact with our dynamic okay. duo get at 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that. <laughs> right. Yes. And then on Saturday, we have our on point radio at 9 a.m., right? So yep. please make sure that you join the dynamic duo on Wednesday as well as on Saturday. Yep. And come with your questions and everything, especially on point because they talk about everything. 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 Not yes. just everything that's happening in the church, but everything happening in the, happening the world. world. So please make sure you come on uh, Saturday, Saturday at 9 a.m. Yep. and then 11.30 a.m. for drive-in service, yes. weather permitted. And then we also want to remind you that October is a special month here at Bethany yes. because it's when? It is our church's anniversary. Our 54th. 54 years. Oh, my gosh. 54, 54 years, years of just transforming lives, yep. people being renewed, just yes. feeling restored and everything. So we want to highlight the anniversary the whole month of October. So yep. I want to encourage you guys, please, if you have any stories, any pictures, any videos, yeah. Especially the old Bethany pictures and videos, yes. right? <laughs> yes. We Make want sure to... you send that over here to us at social oh. at go the number two Bethany.com. Absolutely. So it is Brother Kevin here. And it is